Welcome everyone. This screen recording covers a few of the basics of completion settings and um, activity restrictions in BPS Learns so that you can route your users through a course in BPS Learns and sort of negotiate um, where they go next and what they're able to access at any given point in a course. So one thing that you might want to do within a BPS Learns course is say, okay, you can't access this next topic until you've done this assignment, or you can't access this assignment until you've done this activity. And so one way to do that in BPS Learns is through the completion settings and the activity restrictions um, within a course. And so I'm going to use the BPS Learns Online Learning Facilitator course as an example and show you how to set up completion settings um, and restrict activities so that people can't access them until they've done something within a course. And so as a quick example, I'm going to show you the completion settings on um, one task. We'll look at this one right here. And to edit the settings in any task, you'll go to edit the little drop down menu here and then edit settings. And then at the end of any activity within BPS Learns, and you can see this when you create a new activity as well, you don't have to edit an existing activity. You can do this as you add an activity. Um, you'll have a variety of settings, and these are pretty typical in most of the activities. You can change the appearance. You can impact how it gets graded. And then at the very bottom, you'll almost always see for anything in BPS Learns, restrict access and activity completion. And I'm actually going to start with activity completion. For each activity that you create, you'll want to set the activity completion settings for that activity based on what it is you want to count as complete. And if something counts as complete, then it shows the student a little checkbox that says, you did this, this is done. Um, and so I'm going to unlock the completion options for this activity to show you what this looks like. So under activity completions, it will automatically default to say that students can manually mark the activity as completed. This allows the student to put a check mark there themselves. You don't always want this. Sometimes it's okay for the student to say, I did this, check. Um, but sometimes you want to tell the student when they're done with something based on a set of criteria that you've set for them. So if you want to do this, you can either turn off activity completion. This is another option. You can say, don't, don't let them know when this is done. This is good for like labels. Um, because you don't necessarily care if they looked at the label. So you could say don't in uh, indicate it there. But usually you're going to want to set it to show activity is complete when certain conditions are met. And then you have to define the conditions. And so for this activity, I have said that the student must receive a grade to complete the activity. And I don't have a minimum score, so I disabled this. Um, but you could enable this, and you could say they have to get a grade and it has to be higher than 50%, for example, or it has to be higher than 75 points, depending on what your grade settings are for that task. You can also, instead of saying they need to receive a grade, you could just say they have to view it. Or you could say they have to view it and they have to receive a grade. So that's like the most restrictive setting. Um, but you could say they just need to look at it. They just need to open it up and look at this activity. This is good for if you have a reading. Um, you could just make it just view. And for some activities, you'll see that the required grade doesn't, isn't even there. It doesn't even exist. So this would be true if you had a PDF, a reading, or something that required um, just that they open it up and view it like a video. You wouldn't even see required grade. So this wouldn't even be an option. But you could set it that they have to view the activity to complete it. Um, you could require that they pass it um, or just require that they complete it. Or you could give it a date by which they need to have completed it. So those are completion settings. And once you have completion settings set, then you can think about what you want to restrict access on. So you want to set activity completion settings for every activity you add into your course and make sure that it's just exactly how you want it as you're adding content in. After you've done that, so I'm going to cancel this because I don't want to actually change the, the settings on that. After you've set all your completion settings, you'll be able to see when students have completed a task. And so I'll show you how you can look at how they completed a task. If you come over here under your course administration block and click on reports, then you can look at activity completion. And you can see, so here we have a number of students in our course. And I can see from this page, who has completed what within this course? It shows me a little checkbox if they've completed an activity, and up here are all of the activities for this course. And so this allows me to monitor what people have completed and what they haven't necessarily gotten all the way 
done in the course. Once you have your completion settings set, then you can go in and start doing restricting access settings. And I wouldn't restrict any access settings until you have all of your content up in your course. Then you can go through and start thinking about how you want to route people through your course and you can start restricting things, which is why I didn't show you that right away. As you're adding activities, don't restrict the access yet. Restrict the access after you've added everything and then you can start routing three people through your course. So to restrict access on something, you can see that I've restricted access on this assignment, for example. And my restriction was that this wasn't available until a certain activity was done, this engaging online learners, and that activity is right here. So before they could do this assignment, my students needed to engage with this activity. So I'll show you how I did that. Within any given assignment, here I need to edit the settings, or any given task, you'll have restrict access as an option. And you have lots of options under restrict access. You can restrict access according to a number of things. You can allow access on certain dates. You can allow access based on a certain grade. So maybe they have to engage in that activity, but they have to get a, per certain, a certain grade. They have to be a, a certain percentage. Um, must be at least this. Um, or less than 100% or something. So you can add your grade conditions there. Um, one of the struggles there is if they don't quite get the grade they want, then they might get locked out of an activity, which would require a lot from you as a facilitator to keep on, on top of um, those grade conditions. And this works really well with students, but might be harder to do with adult learners. Or you can set an activity completion condition. And these are the kinds that I use the most often um, that work really well for adult learners. You can set an activity condition and you can choose any activity from within a course. So it'll list all of the activities you have. This is why it's best to wait to do restrict access settings until you've added all your activities because then you have all your activities there that have completion settings associated with them and you can pick from the whole list. And you, need, you can say that must be marked complete, it must be marked complete with the passing grade or a failing grade, or you can say it doesn't need to be marked complete, but I'm not quite sure why you would do that. You just don't have completion settings. While access is prevented, you have the option to either show it grayed out and give the restriction information, or you can say hide it entirely. Don't even show students that it's there until they've already completed the um, prerequisite activities for that. So that is a quick overview of the activity completion settings and the course and the completion settings for each um, for all of the activities within BPS Learns. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact the digital learning team. Thank you.